Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in this lecture we are going to discuss about one of the core services of Hadoop ecosystem which is MapReduce. In the previous lecture we have seen all about HDFS which is a storage layer of Hadoop and how it works. So in this lecture we are going to discuss about the processing layer of Hadoop where we will discuss what is MapReduce, how it works and how it differs with the different processing tools in Hadoop ecosystem. So without further ado, let's get into it. What is really MapReduce? So it is nothing but a processing layer of Hadoop and it's one of the core services in Hadoop ecosystem. So it is designed for processing large volume of data in parallel by splitting the work into set of independent tasks on the cluster. So you just need to put some logic in a way MapReduce works and rest things will be handled by your framework. So this job will be submitted by the user on a master node and is divided into a smaller works which is also known as task and it is assigned to the slave nodes who handle all the groundwork. So here MapReduce will get input from the list and it's converted into an output again in the list. So this was just an high level understanding of MapReduce. But how it really works and what are their core components? that we will discuss in the next topic. So now we have to understand some basic map reduce terminologies where we will discuss what is map, what is reduce and how they work. Then we will also see what is job, task and what is task attempt. First let's discuss about map and reduce. So map reduce job or a full program is nothing but execution of mapper and reduce a function across your dataset. So it is an execution of two processing layers. One is mapper and the second one is a reducer. And a MapReduce job is nothing but a work that client wants to be performed. So the first phase of the MapReduce paradigm is a map function. So map will nothing but takes the key value pair as an input. So whether the data is in structured or unstructured format, the framework converts it into a key value pair. So the key will nothing but it will reference to the input value and the value is the data set on which we need to do the operation. So in map processing, the function is being defined by the user. So user can write any custom function which is nothing but a business logic according to his requirement to process the data. And that function is applied to each and every key value pair which we are passing to the map function. And the map then produces a list of new key value pair. So the output of map is called the intermediate output. And the, it can be different than the input pair. And it is then stored on the local disk from where it is shuffled to reduce node. Then the reduce abstraction comes. So in the reducer, it will take the intermediate key value pairs which is nothing but the output of a mapper function as an input and processes the output of the mapper. So usually it will do the aggregation and the summation like computation. So there are two major points. The first one is input given to the reducer is generated by the map function which is nothing but an intermediate output. And the key value pairs which are provided to reducer are sorted by their keys. So in the reducer processing, the function is defined by the user. So here also, user can write any custom business logic to get the required output. And the iterator supplies these values of given keys to the reducer function. After all the processing, reducer will produce a final list of key value pairs. So the output of reducers is called as a final output and it is stored in the HDFS. Then we can use it for further processing or reporting purpose. So this is how mapper and reducer function works in each MapReduce job. Now let's discuss what is job, task and task attempt. So MapReduce job is nothing but a execution of mapper and reducer across our dataset. In other words, it's, it is just execution of two processing layers, mapper and reducer that we have just discussed. The next one is a task. So task in MapReduce is an execution of mapper or a reducer on slice of data. So it is also known as task in progress, which means 
processing of data is in progress either on a mapper or a reducer and last one is a task attempt so task attempt is a particular instance of an attempt to execute a task on a node so the node will be worker node as it performs all the operation so there might be a possibility that any time machine can go down because of a crash so while processing the data if any node goes down then the framework will reschedule the task to other node and this rescheduling cannot be infinite so there is a upper limit for this as well so the default value of attempt would be 4 so if the task will fail consecutively at 4 times then the job is considered as a failed job so for any high priority or a huge job this values can be increased as per the client requirement so as of now we have discussed what is mapper and what is reducer and how they are working but now we will discuss how these two operations will work together to solve the big data problems so this is an example of how map reduce word count process will work the input which we have given is some words so these are the nine words which we are giving as a input so the input data which is given to the mapper function is processed by the user defined function which is written at the mapper so in this example we have given the input as words then it is getting splitted up in smaller chunk of data and they are passed to the mapping function where the user defined mapper function will executes so in this example for counting the words we have assigning each word with value as a 1 so here the key will be the word and the value is 1 so in this step all the required complex business logic is implemented so that the heavy processing will be done by the mapper in parallel as the number of mappers is much more than the number of reducers so once after the mapper function completes the output of the mapper is known as a intermediate data or a intermediate output which will go as a input to the reducer function but before that the data will be shuffled in the shuffling phase where the data is ordered by their keys so in this phase the similar kind of keys are grouped together and then pass it as a input to the reducer function so here the beer car deer and river all these four words are grouped together so the intermediate result from the mapper function will be then processed by the reducer function and final output is generated so here aggregation will be done so it will count the instances of each word so in this case it will give the output as the word and the number of time it occurs in the list of words so here we have provided the list of words and we are getting the output as the word and how many times it occurred in that list and then we gets the final results which is then stored in the hdfs and also the replication will be done as we have seen in the previous lecture so if the file is of 640 mbs it will store it as a five blocks in our data node if the default block size is 128 mb and if the replication factor is set to 3 each block will be replicated 3 times by considering the rack awareness so that the data will be located as close as possible by maintaining the fault tolerance availability and reliability so this is how map and reduce function will work together to solve the big data problems so this is just a simple example but when we get our hands dirty on our hdb cluster we will take some complicated example so we'll get a better understanding on how this map reduce function will work so now we will discuss how the end to end data flow of map reduce works in which we will see how the input is given to the mapper then how mappers will process the data where this mappers will write the data and how the data will be shuffled from mapper to the reducer node where the reducers will run and also the type of processing should be done in the reducers as you can see in this diagram these three rectangles are nothing but the slave nodes so 
there are total three slave nodes given in this example and on all three nodes mapper will run and the reducer will only run on the two slave nodes so for simplicity in this figure it is shown as reducer runs on a different machine but it will run on the mapper node only it is just for your basic understanding so the input to the mapper is one block at a time and the output of the mapper is written to the local disk of machine on which the mapper is running so once the map function will finishes this is written as a intermediate output which will travel to the reducer nodes for reducer function so reducer is the second phase of processing where user will apply the business logic as per the requirement and since it's a final stage the data will be returned to the hdfs so this figure so this figure is showing how the data is flowing from the mapper reducer stage and then it is replicated to the hdfs so as i told you mapper writes the output to the local disk of machine it is working on so this will be the temporary data so an output of the mapper is also known as intermediate output this we already discuss so all mappers will write the output to the local disk so in this example there are three mappers so all the three mappers will store data on local disk as a temporary and then reducers are getting deployed on the two data nodes where the reducer function will run and then data will be replicated to the hdfs so this is how the data will flow while running the map reduce function now we will discuss what is data locality in map reduce so locality is nothing but a process of moving computation process close to where the actual data is stored instead of moving the last data to the computation it will be easier if we move the computation closer to the data so this is a whole lot of subject but let me give you a higher level idea of what it means so the major drawback of hadoop was the cross switch network traffic due to huge volume of data so for overcoming this they have come up with the data locality concept in hadoop so this is refers to ability for moving computation closer to where the actual data resides this will minimize the network congestion and will increase the throughput of the system but why it is important the main benefits will be the faster execution and the high throughput so in conclusion we can say that data locality will improves the overall execution of the map reduce job and it reduces the network congestion also so this concept will be enough for now we will discuss in detail in the upcoming lectures so i hope you got a clear high level understanding of how map reduce works what in which we have discussed what is mapper what is reducers how they are transforming the data and writing the output back to the hdfs so in the next lecture we will get our hands dirty and run our first map reduce function then you will get to understand how the data problems are solved by the hadoop framework so if you like this lecture please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates and don't forget to follow us on our social media which i have linked in the description below thanks for watching